On this Transducer University, we're going to talk about the proper location for your transducer. We answer the question a lot of where to put the transducer on my boat. And as you might imagine, that's a tough answer to give because there's so many different styles of boat, different lengths of boat, different propulsion types, and obviously different hull materials that we have to take into consideration. But one of the things that we always have to discuss is boundary layer. And the boundary layer is the bubbles that travel down the, the hull as the hull goes through the water. Now we've done another video on it, we'll put a link to it about boundary layer and I'll encourage you to go watch that, it'll explain it all. But that's the number one rule of trying to find the location on the hull where you're going to have the least aerated water going over the face of the transducer and that's going to give you optimal performance. And there, we're going to talk about places on the boat where you're most likely to get that good performance. So let's look at some varying types of boats that are on the market today. And we've chosen four types right here that are more common today in the sport fishing market. And they're center console boats. And the first center console boat is about a 20 to 25 foot model. The two in the middle are gonna represent that 30 to 45 foot center console. And one of them has a stepped hull and one is a non-stepped hull because that matters. And then lastly, we've got a nice big sport fish boat that's gonna represent that over 50 foot range of boats and, and that's got a, a lot of options. So let's dive into the first one. The smaller center console boat is going to have an outboard, maybe two outboards, and there's lots of options for a boat like this. Oftentimes a transit mount transducer is a great option for a boat and that's typically put on the starboard side of the boat because that's usually where the downside of the prop is pushing bubbles away from the hull. So it's going to have the least aerated water right there. Also a great choice is going to be an in-hull. This is a glue-in inside of a fiberglass hull. That's typically going to put, be put low and towards the center line of the boat. It's a great option. And then finally, a through hull. This is actually drill through, put the transducer in, such as our B75 or maybe a B175 transducer, and that's going to be towards the bottom of the boat in the, on the hull, back near the center line of the boat. And we'll indicate that with our little image right here on the, on the screen. All right, so let's talk about the larger center console boats, and in particular, the stepped hull version. Very popular and stepped hulls are great for sending bubbles underneath and giving good lift for the boat. That's why the steps are there in the first place. However, that works against us when we're trying to locate a transducer. So whenever you're running fast, you're gonna be creating too much turbulence to put things towards the back of the boat. So the recommended place for a stepped hull center console boat is in front of that first step. And typically what we do is we see a single tilted element um, B175 or a pair of them along the center line of the boat in front of the step and that's going to give you good performance on that type of a hull. You can also go with an in-hull there shooting through the fiberglass and uh, that's also a solution. Now the non-stepped center console has tons of options. If it's a boat that's less than 35 feet, you can still put a transom mount on it. In fact, our TM-185 larger transom mount is perfect for that. Same location as I mentioned in the first boat. There's an, a bunch of options in terms of a through-haul transducer, our B-265. These have a fairing block. They're great performance at, at high speeds. It's excellent. And you're typically going to put that fairing block either side of the center line and you're going to have the face of that transducer down below the, the boundary layer, so it's awesome, it's perfect for optimal performance. You also have the option for our tilted elements, like say a pair of tilted element transducers. They're gonna go either side of the center line of the boat, and um, they're gonna be back farther in the boat. Great performance. Now, if you're in a boat that's up over 40, 45 feet, you probably want something with a fairing block, not the tilted element. And then lastly on that hull, you can also put in a, uh, an in-hull transducer, if it's a fiberglass hull, and shoot right through the hull for great performance. Now, keep in mind, 
anything ahead of those locations that might be causing bubbles to go past the face of it need to be avoided. So I always got to look at the, the hull itself and make sure that bubbles aren't going to blow past that location. And on some of those center console boats that are larger, say over 40 feet, one of the new options that people are really starting to go with are keel mount or pocket mount models. And these are inserted into a fiberglass pocket that's created on the bottom of the boat. And some of the uh, high-end boat builders are doing this at the factory, and sometimes it's done by one of our installers. And they'll create a custom pocket that builds in a fairing. They'll put it right on the keel of the boat and they'll have optimum water flow over that transducer. So pocket mount, keel mount is definitely an option for larger center console boats. So let's go on to our sport fish boat. Now these boats are 50 foot plus and with a hull like this, you've got lots of options. So let's talk it through. Standard on these boats right now, a lot of people are putting our through-hull transducers with a big fairing on it. And because these larger boats have such a thick boundary layer, you really need to pay attention to fairings and make sure that the face of that transducer is down out of the bubbles. Anytime we're talking about sport fish, whether it's a single, single prop or dual, you need to get four or ahead of those props there's too much turbulence at the back. You've got to be up in front of those. That's the best location as close to the center line of the boat. And one of our through-hull models, or two of our through-hull models, depending if you want, um, can be put there. Also, as I just mentioned with pocket mount and keel mounted, some of these high-end sport fish boats are now building pockets into the keels of the boats to put multiple transducers for multiple frequency opportunity. And that's a great, great choice. And you'll see a picture on the screen of some, some of the more custom models that are done. But I can tell you, building it into the keel, getting it low below that boundary layer is a great location for any speed that this boat's going to go. Now, because these boats are so large, always got to pay attention to everything that's on the hull in front of the location of those transducers. Water intakes, um, you're going to have uh, any kind of a strake or even bow thrusters that are going to put bubbles through. So just pay attention to that. Talk to your boat builder about the best location and then put the transducer that's going to give you the best opportunity to put more fish in the boat.